Hi there. I wanted to show you how I will be using the new web page automation feature within Infusionsoft. Hopefully by watching me go through this campaign, you'll get some ideas for your own business on how you can implement it. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback along the way, there is a comment section below. Please uh, leave it all there and I'll do my best to reply back as soon as I can. Let me go ahead and first explain how to get this thing implemented on your site so you can actually begin to, to use it and see some of the uh, benefits of the automation that's happening. So within your goal section over here on the left, when you log into a, a new campaign, you'll see one called web page automation. And this is kind of the way that it sounds. It triggers when somebody actually visits that page. Now there are some, uh, some nuances there, right? They have to be on your list and the connection between Infusionsoft and the cookie that's on their computer needs to have been set either through a web form submission or through a link click on the email. There's probably a couple of other ways, but those are kind of the main things there. So there needs to be kind of that handoff between the website and Infusionsoft. But once you have all that in place and your CRM record is matched with the web record, then these should start firing off appropriately. Now, if somebody uses a different device like a mobile phone versus a computer or whatever, there's, there could be some discrepancy there. But the main thing is what you'll want to do is go ahead and set up this campaign with the different pages that you want to trigger the automation for. Now within the blog post, which I'll link below, if you haven't read it already, what you'll see and what I recommend is that you start, you know, if you can picture all of your content on your website in like a funnel, marketing funnel, top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom, or in other words, awareness, you know, there's a lot of different feet, there's a lot of different ways that people kind of refer to it. But in essence, the top of your funnel will be web pages, people that visit web pages that are maybe a little bit more cold. They're not really, they don't really know who you are yet. They haven't really gotten to know, like, or trust you yet. And so what we'll want to do is actually focus the, these campaigns on the bottom of the funnel content, meaning things like your pricing page, maybe a, a free consultation page. Um, I've got a testimonials page here that I'll be showing you. Things that people are really, content people are really using to evaluate whether or not they want to do business with you or not. And so that's why I recommend starting with kind of the, you know, the bottom of funnel, the low hanging fruit, in other words. So in my business, what I'm going to be using is, as you can see here, uh, my consultation page. So if somebody visits my consult page and doesn't, you know, sign up, that's a good indication that, you know, they might be ready for me to reach out and see if we can't get them on a phone call. Uh, the other page that I'm, um, that I've set up here is my, you can see forward slash what others are saying, in other words, testimonials. So those two pages are the pages that I'll be focusing on here. All right, so moving forward, what you'll see, uh, kind of just starting with the end in mind here, is that the whole purpose of, of all of this is that they go, because I want to get them on the phone. Like in my business, something really happens until I get them on the phone. We have a conversation and we talk about how or if, you know, my business can even help them. So that's really where, where we start. Now from there, uh, the reason I've put that as an end goal here is because I have automation within these two sequences that shouldn't fire if they do request that consultation. So let me just let me just kind of go through this uh, now from the from the beginning. Somebody visits the consultation page, they come into here, it waits an hour. In essence, it's waiting, and I'm actually I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna actually change that to 30 minutes. Um, let's just do that right now. Hopefully, you don't mind while I make some changes on the fly here. I'm going to wait 30 minutes and then I'm going to apply a tag and, and send them an email that talks about a consultation and let's see if we can't get on the phone together. Now, if they request a consultation within that 30 minute window, then I want this automation, the sequence to stop. And so that's why I've put that delay timer in there and that's why it doesn't fire right away because, you know, if they come to the consultation page and then they get that email, you know, by the time they, you know, they might request a consult and then go back to their email and be all confused. So. That's why the delay timer in there. Same thing on the testimonials page. Uh, this one isn't, um, I've got two hours in that one. I'll probably keep it as two hours. But again, if they visit the, te on, th on this one, the context is they visit the, the testimonials page and then kind of in a half joking manner, I, I ask, hey, do you want to be, you know, my next testimonial? I talk about the benefits of, of doing testimonials in their business and how to automate if they want to with Infusionsoft. And if they're interested, they can definitely schedule a consultation uh, with us. So um, that's really how this all works. Now, what you're um, probably noticing is that there's also this thing down here that says email already received, which is as it sounds, right? If, if somebody's already received this email, 
uh, you know, this, do you want a consultation email or do you want to be a testimonial email? I don't want to send that to them again, right? If they come back, because this will refire, right? So if somebody comes back the next day for that on that consultation page, this this trigger will fire again. So I don't want to send them that email two days in a row or even you know two weeks in a row. So what I'm what I'm doing is I'm telling Infusionsoft, you know, don't don't send it to them more than once. Um, but there's some other things going on there. So within here is I do have a note going that just tells me, hey, this person. This person revisited one of the pages that you know you've deemed as a trigger page, and they've already received the other email. So if you want to personally follow up, then you can do that. So that's you know it's a note. I could put a task in there, but you know I'm just doing a note with a notification. Um, all right. So within here, let me just show you how that decision diamond is set up. So what it's saying is if the contacts tags doesn't contain, and this is for the you know for those who need to get the email. Uh, I've got page trigger automation received consult request email. So that's the that's the email that, that or the tag that I'm firing off as the email gets fired off. So there's that, but I also want to include clients and past clients in here. Meaning, I if they are a current client or a past client, they don't really need to, you know, I don't want to send them this email that's asking for a consult because we've already we've already gone through that whole sales process. So they don't really need that. And then it's just the opposite here. So if they if it does contain, and maybe this is where I should have started to be a little more clear, but if their tags do contain uh, that email or a client email or past client email, then we'll send them down the email already received route, and that'll just again notify me that I, if I want to do a, a personal follow up, and you know I can check if they're a client or if they've you know whatever. So this is the way that I've set mine up, and you know this is, probably isn't perfect. I'm sure this will change. There's you know it's a new feature, and uh, there's a lot of other smart people out there that I'm sure who will add to all of this and add in integrations with third parties and things like that. But, you know, I think this is a really good start. And hopefully, like I said at the beginning, you get some ideas that you can apply to your business um, based on, you know, how you want to use this feature. Uh, like I said, any questions, comments, uh, leave those below. We'll go ahead and talk to you soon. Thanks.